contest as well. As we're getting ready for game number seven for the Dukes of JMU looking for their second consecutive five and two start. And it is Jacobs going up against the big fella, Medley Bacon, and the Duke, the opening tap. It is Deshaun Parker working on the left wing, coming out to defend is Clayton, Clayton number 13. And here is Lewis, Lewis with the first shot, no good, and the seven-footer gets the rebound, and the foul goes to Zach Jacobs, his first. It's going to be tough for the, first. It's going to be tough for the Dukes tonight to get the rebounds with the seven-foot-one Bacon. Although, if you start breaking this team down, Coppin State shoots a lot of threes, and they do not get a lot of rebounds right. at times, too, as you start to break down what they have done thus far. Coming off a win in overtime, these Eagles, they go back door, and the slam is good. Picked up Kobe Thomas. Thomas averaging 8.4 points per game. A 40% shooter, but you're 100% when you're above the rim, as that shot was. That was a simple miscommunication by the Dukes on the defensive end. Christmas kicks it back out, Banks. Banks here to Parker, whirling it around. Lewis gets in the crowd, takes a little shot, and uses it off for the bucket. So Matt Lewis has his first two. And it is 2-2, one minute into this contest. And it's off the Eagles as Andrew Robinson, the last to touch it. It was a good play by Banks there, too, to make the pass harder for them. Banks is edging up. He's uh, only three steals away from getting in the top ten all time in that category. He's only a junior, so he'll certainly get in there. Banks drops one down, and he has been blistering the. Yes, he's yes. He's been averaging 17 and a half the last few games, and it's 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 a good uh, sight to see for Banks right now. Here's McKnight again, a transfer. A number of transfers on this Coppin State team is. A nice little floating McKnight. We may see the score get a little high here today, so buckle up early. Yeah, the, the tempo, both teams like to play tempo. Juan Dixon was that in the NBA, and Lewis Rose, new offense, the one and a half tempo, so. Parker into the corner. It is Lewis, and count the bucket for, because he's got a quick five. And with that, the Dukes take an eight to four advantage. Lewis coming in, that's his 128th career three-pointer as the ball is out of bounds on the far side. Yeah, Lewis needs 15 points Jamar Perry. Jamar finished his career in 2000 with 1,123 points. Lewis to the moment has 1,113. Also in range tonight, Stucky Mosley, but he'll need a really good night yeah. to catch Stuckley. I think Stuckey at 27 points is what he'll need to surpass him. But it is doable. And he stepped on the sideline, did Lewis. And he's had a good start so far, Lewis has. So it, it, we could see that type of night this catch Stucky. So we never know. Well, of course, he had a great night against Hofstra last year yeah. when he poured in 40 for the Dukes. Bringing it up for the Coppin State Eagles out of Baltimore, Maryland. Not a real big campus. That's off the iron. And then by Banks. But this is also a program that in the mid 70s won an NAIA champion. They That's won, I think they won five games in six days to get that title. And that's up. I'm sorry, I got screened off by the official. Ignite with, the hit, with, that, that, with that three on the wing. Thank you. You had a better angle than I did. Yeah. Here's Parker trying to answer off the back of the. Rebound comes out to Robinson. Robinson at 6'7". He's out at Tacoma Park, although he started his collegiate career in Connecticut at Quinnipiac, the Bobcats. Personal foul on Medley Bacon. Bacon averaging 4.6 points per game per contest with his 7'1 frame. Banks, another long-range three. That partially down, but it rims back out. One-point jam, you lead Dukes defensively. It's Christmas trying to defend, and he does so. Ball back. Lewis comes up with it, leaves it for Banks. Banks will drive it in. All-star defense on the other end. Good. Penetrate. Uh, trying to pen uh, Robinson, uh, Thompson trying to pen uh, Thomas trying to penetrate, and Christmas stopped it and led to the fast break. Edley Bacon working against... The Dukes, 
And another potential, ooh, and hitting the floor. We get a couple of guys, and this may be on Thomas getting underneath Michael Christmas. Thomas may have got the tougher of the blow as Christmas came down on him. And Thomas not in good shape right now as he is obviously in some pain on the floor. Here comes Juan Dixon. He does come out to see his player as well as the trainer. And yeah, there's Coach Dixon. You can see him. He's there in the blue suit with the beard. And uh, again, he had a tremendous career. I remember watching him play with the Maryland Terrapins when they won the national championship in 2002. He was doing the play-by-play -play for the Wizards at that time. He plans to come back and work with us a little more in uh, the next semester. We were great, it's great to have him here when the JMU women hosted Maryland. And Banks, long range, boy, he is, he got a slow start, but he has more than made up for it. I think he just needed that George Mason road game just to get him focused back on his shot. He missed his first 10 of the year. And a jump ball, good hustle by the Dukes who lead it 13 to seven. He, he had an 0 for 10 game against Shenandoah, and it's no, not expected, obviously, but he, but he, it's a good sight to see the Banks is going back. So, 15:32 to play in the opening half. The Dukes they lead it by six. Back after this timeout, you're watching Jamie Men's basketball on Matazone. Valley Pool and Spa. But the Dukes' defense against the three has been good thus far this season. I think that's just you know the coaching staff telling the Dukes to be, stay organized, stay on the three ball as much as you can. I think you're right. Organization plays a big part in communication. Even so with that, ball again on the floor, but picked up a floorboard, Bacon. Here on the side, it is Clayton. Clayton gets it inside, a bump with Jacobs. Inside, Michael Christmas, uncontested, leaves it for Banks. Gets the man flying by, and he's going to pull up another three. That is three for Banks, who hit four here in Saturday's win over New Hampshire. That ties his career high, so he's already set career night, at least from beyond the arc. Yeah, and Banks with the clever up pick as Jacobs goes up there. But he had a clever up the bacon in the air, and then Banks shot, shot with confidence. That's the good side of Banks. Long range, and it is Lewis with the rebound for JMU. Flipping it out, Parker. Parker drives, leaves it for Jacobs. Christmas will try a three. Ooh, bit does not register for JMU. So far this season, the Dukes' ball movement has been a lot better than some of the recent seasons with Lewis Rowe, and that's thanks to Josh Oppenheimer to, for his new offense. Dukes are six out of 11 early, four out of nine on three-point tries, and the ball bounds around and tumbles home as the bucket scored by McKnight. He's got seven at the opposite end. With a backdoor cut by Lewis on the layup. Lewis has seven, so Lewis with seven and Banks with eight. The one-two punch. Punching early and a foul on Medley Bacon. That's a tough foul on the big fella. Banks actually has 11 right now, Kurt. He's oh, he does. You're right. Sorry. I didn't register his last one. I was too busy looking sure. at other numbers. So Christmas goes out, uh, and Jack Jacobs heads out. Here's Dwight Wilson. He'll let check in for the Dukes, as will another freshman, Julian Wooden, 6'8 freshman from Roanoke, Virginia, out of Northside High School. Pride of the Vikings. Wonder if Allie Barefoot's watching tonight. Allie, text me if you are. <laughs> Allie at home in Roanoke. She'll be here on uh, Saturday for some sideline reporting as the Dukes back in efforts of East Carolina. Joe Dooley brings his club to town out of Conference U.S. No, actually, they're on the AAC now. They used to be in Conference USA. And we get a foul away from the ball. It's on Nigel Marshall, who just checked in a moment ago, 6'5", sophomore from Irvington, New Jersey. McNamara, that is his first. He tried to set the screen, and it was just a little bit moving there. Nearly with a turnover, and Banks runs him off the ball. Oh, man, says <laughs> Marshall. That's not the way he saw it. 
That also drink, brings a bit of a chuckle by the official as well. 18-9, JMU. Well, the Dukes were to wire against New Hampshire. It's the only time this season they've done that in the four wins. It did get dicey down late for the Dukes, though, on Saturday. And steps on Wilson, and Wilson saying that the ball was deflected, and he was trying to play through it. Boy, tell me about it. I wish we had replay to see the, if it was a travel. Yeah, we do apologize, folks. We're having a little technical difficulty with our replay unit. So, oh, we do. Okay, I've just been informed that they we have it back now. So, ask and John Salem delivers. Wilson couldn't catch up. Oh, it still is uh, Coppin State's ball. The way the Dukes were hustling. Here we go. Here it is. I don't, I don't know about that one, but the refs see it. Saw that they're changing now. Dukes shooting at 54%. Parker with a basketball as he is hawked up front. As Williams out there and Banks. Fourth tray, he's got 14 points. He has already tied his career high for three pointers in a game. Long rebound comes out to Thomas. Tries to shoot over Wilson. It's Lewis. Duke's on the run. Banks, the other corner. Is he good there? This time. This might be the fastest to 14 points. Banks has scored uh, in his career. Timeout on the floor. Dukes, they've got it heated up here. They've got the oven toasty for Thanksgiving this Tuesday night here in Harrisonburg. Last game here at the combo before Thanksgiving. And Javis Harvey has come in to the Dukes for the Dukes and nearly turned it over. The Dukes will maintain possession. Again, Banks with 14 points. He's already tied his career high with three, uh, four three-pointers. Comes to Lewis. Harvey, Wooden, it's off the back there. Rebound, Wilson, Wilson lost the handle. We should see the advantage for the Dukes on the rebounds um, with, without Bacon in the lineup. I believe that uh, the way that Coppin State runs runs its offense, it does lead to a lot of, well, very few offensive rebounds. Although last year in the 10-point loss to the Dukes, it's nice cutting and finally does roll in. Kobe Tom Thomas has his second field goal. The uh, Eagles had 20 as Javis Harvey joined raid. That is his sixth of the season, shoots just above 30%. The answer the other end, yep, it's good. As Williams, third of the season, and we got a injured player. I think that's Thomas again. He is uh, having some struggles, and he's going to need some help again. And a timeout on the floor for his injury. Harvey hits the tray. And so with that, the Dukes are six out of 14. What I was going to say was uh, the, the Eagles got 20 offensive rebounds in this game last year, which is the most of any game coached by Juan Dixon in his two-plus seasons with Coppin State. I think they're checking a substitution opportunity for the Dukes on the other side. I think they want to get Parker in for Lewis again, some rest. That's what they're going to do. Just making sure that the uh, institution was legal. In terms of, uh, did somebody come in and no time ran off the clock and making the sub back out? Here is Banks, kick out Parker. Harvey gets his man up in the air and then 
knocked away. Good run by McKnight. Oh my God! And a couple of misses. And a little bit of unbelievability underneath the net, too. Bell is on Harvey. That's his first. And the team's second. It sends the free throw line one out of five. No, I'm sorry about that. Three out of four. Make it three out of five. The interesting thing about chopping states, so. Oh, okay. The chopping state is eight steals per game. As a team right now. That's my bad, Kurt. That's my bad. No, we're good. We're good. Here's Wilson, and he just plows his way through. He'll get a couple of free throws. And this foul is on McKnight. His first, fifth team foul. So Wilson will go to the free throw line. Dwight, 6'8", junior, Tallahassee, Florida, Lincoln High School. Four and a half points, six and a half rebounds. One out of three at the free throw line. Made his only attempt against New Hampshire on Saturday. That New Hampshire final was 78-71, but it was a game in which the Dukes built a 24-point lead in the first half. It got trimmed down a bit. It's built two 24-point leads, and I don't mean like it went 24-22 back to 20. Got down into the teens and back up to 24 again. And... Uh, Went a little deeper on the bench. New Hampshire hit a few three, threes down the stretch. Really never felt in danger, but after the close call at Old Dominion, there was a little bit of concern, I guess, a little anxiety. But the Dukes did hold on for the victory. Yeah, when you think about it, the Dukes in the fourth quarter, the last two games have, like, it's big, and they've let it slip, slip away a little bit, but that's the thing. They still put out with the win, so that's all that matters. The rebound. Banks' line is already, it looks like it should be a full game. He has 14 points, five out of eight from the field, four out of seven on three pointers, one rebound, all in 10 minutes. Multiply that by four and you got a monster game, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, Wooden will check out for the Dukes. Michael Christmas comes in, Banks will take a breather. So it's Parker, Christmas, Lewis, Wilson, and, and for JMU. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the Steelers for Chopin State, they like to play like Juan Dixon did in his career. He was much known as a defender in his career. Foul called against the Coppin State Eagles, a blocking foul. That's on McKnight, his second personal for number two. Knight scored a game-high 24 points in the season opener against Ryder. That was a loss. Let's see if Parker can get off the schneid here from the line. There you go. That was his first May free throw of the season. He was previously 0 for 8 at that, before that point. All right, Clayton comes back in for Coppin State. One out of two. Christmas. And unwrap the gift. It is closer to that time of year. So <laughs> it is. The drive by Williams. He's a Grinch on this one. Leaves it for Wilson. And he then scores the basketball. Maybe we should get through Thanksgiving first before maybe. we continue with the Christmas maybe, punts. Maybe. We'll just keep them to a minimum at this stage. Yeah. We don't want to stuff anything too much. True, true. But the turkey. There's a three. Stuff for Andrew Robinson. Good three-point shooter. He, he launches them a lot. He came into the game 19 out of 62. I fit, he is a, the antithesis of Juwan Dixon's style so far this season. I was looking at the stats the other, yesterday for prepping this game. He, I was like 62 shots already. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the point of the Juwan Dixon offense so far. All right, Parker goes back out of two. Deshaun 
All rookie selection in the Colonial Athletic Association last year. One misses the front end of it. That leaves some points on the board. Or off the board, rather. This is Aaron Robinson, the other twin, and he launches one from 36 try this year, and he makes his 10th of the season. Cuts the lead to six. Dukes led 21 to nine at one stage. Harvey has to get rid of it. Lewis has to go up and get it. May have taken one in the eye. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Lewis kicks it out. Christmas three. Last touch by the Dukes. And that brings us just underneath the eight minute timeout. One tick off the clock is enough to send us to the break. 28-22, JMU with the advantage. 7.59 to play in the first half. Coppin State on a 6-0 run. They've hit five of their last seven shots. You're watching it all right here on Madison. Do you own rental property but are tired of calls from tenants at all hours? Worn out by constantly searching for good tenants? Let Reiner Rentals manage your rentals so you can rest easy and maintain a profitable investment. We take away the headaches of advertising, leasing, maintenance, rent collection, and accounting by treating your rental like one of our... 28-22. Coppin State trailing James Madison. Dukes led by as many as 13. There's a drive, the kick out. Robinson from this corner is good. Penetration, easy kick out for the for the tray. Andrew. Lewis gets the rebound, kicks out. Here is Christmas. And the three-point shot, Banks can't hit. And a foul on JMU. It's called on Zach Jacobs. That's the second on Zach. Just a little twist in the back by Jacobs right there. We did get a text back. Ali is watching tonight, by the way. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. 13-point lead, been striking distance, and it is gone. Oh, oh two-pointer, beg your pardon, two-pointer. That one hit by Clayton, that's his first bucket. Hand check out top. That's foul number eight against Coppin State. Dukes are in the bonus. Foul is against Clayton. That's his first personal. Coppin State on an 11-0 run over the last 2.15. Dukes have not scored for 2 minutes 25 seconds. Lewis can't hit. 5% shooter in his career, but he is not shooting it very well to start off this year at the free throw line. 71%, and that's just gone up recently. Clayton got it going, but breaking inside was Reggie James, a freshman out of Trenton, New Jersey. Two and a half points he contributes per ball game. Just a simple miscommunication of what the ideas were. Kobe Thomas reports back in for the visitors. Banks, Lewis launches and hits. All that the run that uh, Chopin State was on the last couple of possessions. Uh, last couple of possessions. He gets in double figures yet again in his career. Does Lewis? That's the 59th time. Second game. You can call that consistency. No doubt about that. Here's Christmas. No, it will not. Well, he got it where he wanted it. That's knocked away, deflected off the hands of Jacobs. 5.36 remaining in the first. So far this season, I like Jacobs' positioning on that, on the block when, it, when they run a, run a zone or off a help defense. And 
inbounds, goes to Clayton. Here's Robinson, McKnight working against Lewis, drives, floats it, misses it, and a double dribble, a travel call actually on Kobe Thomas. Five twenty-two to go in the first half. It's Jacobs in the corner, still scoreless. Skips the pass. Lewis tries to launch another. He does. In Andrew Robinson. Long-range tray zero. Is Aaron Robinson, but no dice. Lewis skips it. Parker drives it, leaves it, and knocked away. Last touch by Jacobs. Jacob saw the basket before he saw the ball there, Kurt. And he's taking credit for the miss. Coppin State and two and five. Coming off the win against Cornell, 68-66 in overtime. Their other win was against Loyola of Chicago on the road, 76 to 70. Banks, low pass, he couldn't get a shot off with it. Lewis is alone in the corner. Instead, he'll draw some contact. He'll go to the free throw line. After the foul, is registered against McKnight, which that is his third with 4.15 to play in the half. That one smarts a bit for, for Coppin State. Win over Loyola Chicago. Broke a stretch of 74 consecutive losses against Division I non MEAC teams. Wow. Yes. It goes back to December 19, 2012. Now, realize you don't play but eight, ten non conference games right. a year. But still, that's a long stretch. Yeah. Lewis hits the free throw and gets two out of two, up to a dozen points. So far, it's starting to remind me of last year's game a little bit, except with Lewis and Banks in the charge instead of Sucky. Yeah, Sucky Mosley finished up his career. He's he's uh, in range of Matt Lewis to pass, uh, surpass ultimately. Matt uh, getting close, in fact, to catching Jamar Perry. He's at 1,120 points to the moment. He's a tray away from tying Jamar. Lewis, it's off the iron, gets the rebound. Leaves it for Banks. That's number five for number five and five. Five trays in a ball game. Oh, that started with Matt Lewis following his own shot. Now kids, always remember, follow your shot. Good things happen. Please do try that at home. Follow your shot. Trying a shot, and zero, zeroes in, has his second tray. Six points for another grad student. He too is at Quinnipiac. Uh, block on Christmas. That's his first personal foul. Goes as a Jamie turnover as well. The Dukes have Turned it over seven times today. 2.56 to go in the half. Duke's up by a half dozen. We'll continue with more, Jamie. Here's Clayton bringing it up the floor. Thomas, back to Clayton. Robinson here right in front of our location, hits the three. He's up to nine. And it's a three-point lead. Both teams are already taking 23s. Dukes have made eight. Coppin State made seven. Banks goes for his sixth tray, and he hits it. 20 points for Darius Banks, all in the first half. We still got a little bit 
yet to play in this half. Well, he's probably going to set a new career high. He just set it on Saturday. He had 23 in the win over New. He's already set one career high with his three pointers. Here's Lewis, tries to keep pace, and he does. Lewis with 15 points, 32nd timeout for Coppin State as the Dukes push the lead back out 42 to 33. It has, like that's the thing, they've been practicing this all year long. That's why you're seeing the results of the 10 threes so far this half. Another three pointer though answered. Robinson, he's in double figures. He's got 12, 42, 36, one and a half to go. Down low it goes Wilson. Wilson finishes. Now that was a Steve Nash pass by Parker right there. Even deeper, that's off the mark, flying in. And Pack from behind is Marks do the Eagles and Marshall scores it. That's his first bucket of the day. Parker drove all the way there. Parker has his first field goal, three points for Deshaun, under a minute to go. Off the backboard, tapped out Wilson though, into a hand of a Coppin State Eagle, and it's Marshall, Moves it down with a bit of a Euro step. He's got four, 46-40. We're on our way to a chicken nugget night. Chicken well, nuggets chicken. are probably gonna happen within 15 minutes of the second half. <laughs> you might be right. Thomas. Way off, Wilson, 29 seconds, shot clock still in effect. It's simultaneous, it's probably like a five tenths of a second ahead, or uh, behind, so. A split second, timeout, 30 second called by the Dukes with 17.1 on the game clock, 17 on the shot clock. So essentially it's the last shot here. Pretty in 17 seconds to work with before the break. At halftime, we'll take a look at a lot of honors for JMU football as the LCA squad announced today. Down low, Wilson, too strong. Side rebound. Stepping into a, that should be a two. Yep. It is a two-pointer, yep. Well executed on the quick run as it is banked in by Aaron Robinson. He ends up the half with eight points, and it's only a four-point spread at the break. When you think about the execution of that break, the defense for the Dukes wasn't quite back in time. They had two players open on the opportunity right there. Got it to the right player. 46-42 is our score. Here's the last play. And this is JMU Dukes basketball, and it's presented to you from Learfield IMG College. Back with our halftime right after this. Hey, sweetie. Sit, Dad. If that is your real name. What's my favorite vegetable? Brussels sprouts. My favorite color? Green. Favorite ice cream? You're lactose intolerant. Okay, why the interrogation? Mom said your identity was stolen, so I'm making sure it's really you. We're good, thanks to Atlantic Union Bank. Introducing Identity Theft Resolution Services, free for Atlantic Union Bank personal checking customers. Ready to bank better? Everything in our lives is constantly improving, and standards are always being raised. That includes air service at the Shenandoah Valley Regional Airport. Now with new United Express Jet Service, Shenandoah Valley travelers can conveniently connect to United's global network in Chicago O'Hare and Washington Dulles, keeping you moving onward to wherever your travels take you. Fly SHD. Book the low. All right, we're back underway here at the Jamie Convocation Center. Here's Lewis, launches the three, tapped by Banks. It looked like it got deflected. Banks this time hit again as try, try, try again for Darius. A whistle and a foul against the Eagles. The foul is the fifth, uh, excuse me, the third on number 35, Medley Bacon. So the big fella gets in there and he gets a foul quickly. And Darius Banks will go for point number 21, and he gets it.
Going into Saturday, he was 22 points. Well, he's got 21 at the moment. Coming out of Saturday, his career high is 23. I'd say that's in jeopardy. It's going to be in jeopardy, but it probably will be eclipsed the way he's been playing as of late. It's a good sight to see for Lewis Rowe. Dukes need to get uh, a little tighter on defense, however. And this time, man down and lofts it up for 14. It's a four-point spread still. Parker will shake. Christmas will try the three. Off the heel, Medley Bacon uses the 6-1 frame to go up and get it. When you're coached by a former NBA player, it's, your offense is going to be a good offense. As there's a foul on Banks on the outside there. That's the first personal on Darius. And the, the rebounding situation uh, is tied up at 25 apiece. And Coppin State has been out-rebounded by an average of 10 in the five losses. So an indicator when they're in it rebounding-wise, they stay in the ball game. And which tied to your point earlier, when they shoot the ball well, they stay in the game. Trying to bake down Lewis. Lewis loves off, missing, and the rebound. That's the second rebound for Chris, I mean for Zach, rather. Excuse me, Chris, his father. I'm good for that once a game. Here's Lewis. Good ball movement. That goes off the rim. Rebound for Clayton. Tries to break it down against Parker and scores against Deshaun. Nice transit, Clayton. Jacobs working. Fadeaway shot, good. Good touch on the fadeaway positioning. Leads to the nice basket. Yeah, that's his first bucket in a while. He had a good game against Old Dominion. When he scored a career-high 20. Game against New Hampshire, and that was his first two tonight. Dukes turned the basketball over. As uh, Clayton hurt his back on the last hustle play. Dixon coming across the floor again. And a foul called on Javis Harvey. Second personal, team foul number two. Zero in a round, tapped up, and the second ball put in. Medley Bacon has his first bucket. It comes off an offensive rebound. It's a two-point game. Harvey. Parker tries the three. Kobe Thomas, McKnight on the run. Slows down. Big mismatch here with Parker. Parker leaves it, missing the dunk, getting the rebound back up and in, and he is fouled and scored the basketball. Kobe Thomas, with persistency, ties it up at 50 apiece, still have a chance to give Coppin State the lead. See, that was good offense right there by Juan Dixon and his crew leading into this replay by getting Bacon on Parker. That was a good mismatch. Sets up the Thomas finish. Nigel Marshall comes back in for Coppin State. Thomas at the free throw, 17 out of 30. And he gives the Eagles their second lead of the night. They led 2-0. Wilson couldn't handle the... 
Wilson still trying to get his rhythm and his timing down. And it's going to be tough for Wilson for a little while because he's just missed so many much minute with the ankles. As uh, Robinson scored, Andrew Robinson scored. I think. That's, yeah, 16 for that Robinson. And a foul as Lewis driving in. Foul is on Nigel Marshall. That is his second. Team second as well. Parker triggers in for James Madison. Down by three. And a whistle before the inbound. That's on Andrew Robinson. His first. He was calling it on it. Parker going to inbound right there in front of you. Comes out to Banks. Banks contested three is off the mark. Rebound. It's Parker. And yes, it drops in. Deshaun Parker has five. Knight fires the left-handed three-pointer. No run out for the Dukes. Wilson lays it in. Wilson looked good there, Kurt. He did. Didn't try to do too much, just let the ball kind of carry him towards the hoop. And he gives the Dukes the lead at 54-53. Tough shot, weak side rebound. Boston, the Dukes come up with it because of his efforts. Banks to Wilson, runs the floor. Wilson, fadeaway shot, good. That was one thing they were teasing about, Wilson running the floor in this offense. And he's shown that he can do that the last couple of games. The Dukes recapture a three-point advantage. They've scored six in a row, and that's knocked away. Picked back up by Knight. Fade away good. A little schoolyard comes up with nine. And it's a one-point affair. Parker in the paint. Backhanded scoop shot. No good. Into the cheerleaders goes Parker. And a foul on the floor. Wait to get the foul. It's on Kobe Thomas. That is his second. Team foul number four, and it also brings us to a media timeout. 56-55, Dukes lead it by one. This basketball team here at the Convocation Center before we move uh, down University Boulevard just a little bit to uh, the Atlantic Union Bank Center. I still think they need to play for Darius Banks. Yep. Banks has to score first at the Bank Center. Yep. I'm going to lobby for that every time I see Lewis Rowe during the offseason. <laughs> hopefully I'll be here for that, but I, like in town, hopefully. Hope a lot of people are in town for that one. Reggie James, a freshman, back out on the court for Coppin State. Juan Dixon took the way to basketball to show him. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Let me show you how to do this. Off, hard off the iron rebound, tracked down by James. The drive from Marshall. Lewis disrupts it just a bit. Banks looking for a steal. He's going after it. And what do we get? Three seconds maybe? Yep. I think he stepped on the line. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Coppin State picked to finish seventh out of the 11 teams in the MEAC, North Carolina Central and Bethune-Cookman. They got, both got eight first place votes. Dukes are picked to finish fourth in the Colonial. Rebound comes out awkwardly, but Robinson comes up with it. I could see the Dukes trend upward as the season goes on on those preseason polls, Kurt. That would be nice. But uh, the league is... Everybody's getting some wins in the league and non-conference. Nobody less than two victories at this point of the season. Still very early, obviously. Right. And the reason I say that is for the MEAC, for example. And no, nope, won't fall for Wilson. But a foul, and he'll get a chance to go to the free throw line. Foul is on number four, Nigel Marshall. That's his third. Wilson goes to the free throw line. Uh, the standings in the MEAC. I think there are three or four teams. There's actually one, two, three, four teams that do not even have a win yet yeah. at the bottom of the Mia. Wilson hits the free throw. One out of two 
Banquet. Wilson with nine points. Nope, make that ten. Beg your pardon. Clayton back out there after he went out with a problem with his back. Marshall down low, reverse foul on Wilson. That's his first. For the rest of the MEAC, just to kind of let you know, the schools that participate in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, as I mentioned, North Carolina Central, then Bethune-Cookman. That foul on Wilson, his first team fourth, and it sends Reggie James to the free throw line. He is one out of two this season. You've got uh, North Carolina A&T, and I'll do these in the order in which they're predicted to finish. Spartans of Norfolk State, South Carolina State, Howard, then Coppin State, Morgan State, Florida Delaware State, the women of JMU play Delaware State here on December the 17th, mm -hmm. and the Hawks of Maryland Eastern Shore. Well, here's the thing about free You said Howard before Coppin State. Howard right now is over for seven in, on their yes, season. Yeah. But you never know what their schedule is all about either. So right. Lewis, uh, for example, these Eagles, they're going to fly figuratively and literally. I don't know about literally, but close. 598 miles during their travel. Wow. Yeah. And this is the first of eight consecutive road games for, for Coppin State. Oh, that's going to be a rough stretch for Juan Dixon and his crew. But that is not uncommon for schools such as Coppin State. It's one way that they uh, take care of things from a budget standpoint. Right. Marshall almost had a thunderous slam right there on the other end. As he cuts to the nice cuts to the basket right there. Just couldn't grab the handle, but he was fouled on the play, so he's going through the line for two. Banks picks up the foul. That is his second, and it does send Marshall to the stripe. He is a day. Add another. The reason I made that preseason point, Michigan State was a team in the preseason. They just lost to the Hokies in the Maui Invitational. Yeah, congratulations to the Hokies and Hit Kung. Mike, uh, another one of those Old Dominion Athletic Conference uh, alumni. He was at Emory and Henry. He and I were at our respective schools about the same time. Of course, uh, overlapped a little bit, so I've followed his career somewhat. Of course, he had a good career at Wofford. That pass passed by Banks. And a good run and a nice finish. Marshall finishes. 59-58, 12.30 to go. Another bad pass for the Dukes. Clayton comes out of the pack, and he finishes it up with the left hand, and the Dukes want to take a timeout. Goes back to my equation I laid out Saturday. Weak passes equals fast breaks. And the lead is also part of that equation for Washington State. Here's one of them right here. As we go to the, they just weren't smart plays. There's no way of dicing it any other way. Yep. Here's Lewis, 15 points for Lewis, by the way. He has tied Jamar Perry on the all-time scoring list. He's number 25. Harvey Warner, another rebound for the Eagles. And the e rebounds remain even. It's 33 apiece. Little switch over for Clayton into the corner. A kick back out to Aaron Robinson. Both Robinsons on the floor right now. They're one of eight sets of twins playing Division I college basketball across the country. As Marshall hits the three, both twins in Kentucky during their run back in the 2014 season with Anthony Davis. Low it goes. Wilson finishes after the catch. Wilson with a dozen points. Duke's down by a deuce, however. Wilson's career high, 26 against Towson. And another bucket for Marshall. He has 11 off the bench. And in the man, trapping over on that side. Will uh, Lewis loses the handle going up, and then he fouls afterwards as James coming out. And so Lewis has his first personal foul. 
team six. So the Dukes are one foul away from putting Coppin State in with the bonus. 10.48 to go. We are at a media timeout, the under 12. Coppin State feeling pretty good right now. They have yet to score here in the first nearly 10 minutes of the second half for James Madison. I like the adjustments that Dixon had made in, at the half. Getting, get, it, getting it inside, a good adjustment from Juan Dixon and Coppin State. And Medley Bacon takes it inside. A foul is called against Marshall. That's number four on number four. Six team foul. Dukes has had four turnovers in the last 319. That's why they're down right now. That helps a bit. Here comes the inbounds into the corner. Three-pointer right away off the iron, taking the shot. And it's Medley Bacon with the rebound. Dukes down by their largest margin thus far, 67-61. Remember last year, the Dukes had to come from behind to send this contest into overtime. McKnight, left-handed shot, bounds around, does not tumble. Eventually with the rebound for James Madison. Lewis on the wing, splits a couple defenders, goes up strong, too strong it ends up, comes away with it. That's Down the best the shot selection from Lewis right there. Kind of forced one. Down for Harvey. Here's a skip pass here, Banks. Off the mark now. He's gone from red hot to stone cold. Yep. Fade away, no good. Both teams looking a little tired here at the moment. Just a lot of standing around after these three pointers are launched. Yep. Zach Jacobs comes back in for Chavis Harvey. Here comes Parker in too. And Deshaun Parker in to run the offense for the Dukes. Wooden will check out. Lewis also heading out. Who else came in here? No, I think just Lewis is heading to the corner. Oh, he is. You're right. He's going to the corner. Thank you. <laughs> like, where is everybody? Oh, well, Christmas is inbounding, of course, at the far end. Yep. Coppin State on a 12-2 run over the last four minutes. of penetration there as Christmas probes a couple of times. Here's Parker drives. Christmas in the corner. Ball ripped into the paint. Lewis alone for the three. No dice. Rebound tapped around in the hands of Clayton who slows it down. That was a good pass out by Christmas. Just couldn't finish. Dukes, five out of 17 from the field this half, including 0 for 9 on three-pointers. Clayton, left-handed, or right-handed layup, rather, will not fall in a battle for the basketball, and eventually a foul is whistled against JMU. Call on to Sean. It's the first on Deshaun Parker. Seventh, though, against James Madison. Good battle for the ball by both teams. Just, I think Parker grabbed him, maybe, on the back end. On that. Right. Front end of the one and one goes awry. Dukes come up with the possession. Parker, that one's 0 for 10. The Dukes from, from beyond the arc. Five out of eight inside the arc here in this half. Get bodies a bumping. Let's see. Call this on. It's on Michael Christmas. Freshman out of Virginia Beach has his second personal foul. McKnight at the line. 71% free throw shooter coming in. Splashes the first one. That's his first try at the line tonight. 
This is their first real test for the Dukes behind this season so far. Let's see if they can overcome it. They were down, but there was no way they are coming back in that one. This is their first real test at home in a close game. Parker. Christmas drives the pass. Banks tries another. And the Dukes 0 for 11. Josh Oppenheimer with a big slap of the hands after missing yet another. Banks just couldn't quite get it in the pocket, the shooter's pocket right there. He had a corral it a little bit. That's why I think that one went off a little bit. Here's Clayton and Coppin content with working the clock also. They're being deliberate here. Slips it in and the shot mid. Medley Bacon, they got the play they wanted. Sean Parker, here comes Christmas, leaves it up for Jacobs, and that is smash glass. Medley Bacon, 7-1, sizzles that one off the glass, and here's a three-pointer outside. What a transition. Dropped in Aaron Robinson. He has 11, and it's an 11-point lead on that transition. The Dukes trailing. Good, good ball movement, good block by Medley Bacon on there. Heating and Cooling is a proud sponsor of James Madison University Athletics. What perfect feels like, Lennox. Back, back to the action here at the JMU Convocation Center. This is Lewis with the basketball, 16 on the shot clock. Lewis losing the handle. The Dukes with 15 turnovers. Banks with a steal. And he hangs on to it, slides it up. No good. Rebound chain. Christmas gave it the effort. Here's the pass back, and Christmas. Banks to Parker, to Lewis. And hang on here, we've got a foul on the floor. It was a reach in there, but good hustle play about Christmas. We need, that's what I think the Duke's gonna use that as momentum, hopefully. Foul is on Kamar McKnight, that is his fourth. He picked up his third with 4.15 to go in the first half, so he's gone Considerable length of time without a foul. It puts Lewis to the free throw line. It looks like we have a stoppage in play here. Not sure for what. Oppenheimer's talking with Dixon right now, and then Dixon's talking with the refs. Every one of them is important right now for yep. James Madison trailing, and Lewis takes over sole possession of 25th place on the all-time scoring chart. He just pushed past Jamar Perry. Next on the list is Matt's former teammate, Stunky Mosley. Knowing Lewis, he wants to win more than push pass. Yeah, that just all comes with the, uh, with the process. Two out of two. He is 10 away from Stucky, as Kurt mentioned, too. Three-pointer. Another one hit by zero. Aaron Robinson, 14 for him. Lewis, skies high, and he hits the ground hard, but he's okay. I hope Kenzie's okay. She's fine. She's tough. She's from Nebraska. Oh, yes. <laughs> Cheerleaders checking with her. You okay? Nothing phases Kenza. All you get is an eyebrow raise out of her. Yeah. There's Lewis back at the free throw line. You see the touch back from Lewis at the stripe. He had, didn't have that the last few games. The first few. Both in, 19 for Lewis. He's looking for his third consecutive 20-point game. He's got 20 of those in his career. When the Dukes have trailed this season, they did, did turn to this half-court kind of press. Juan Dixon's crew did handle that well there, so. Goes Clayton, leaves it out. Another three-point try, and another is good by Aaron. 
Well, it was all Darius Banks the first half, but Robinson stealing the show here. Robinson's points are combined for 31 right now, Kurt. Christmas. Parker in the paint. Drive to Wilson. Too many hands or too many claws representing the Eagles in there. There were three bodies in there trying to fit that pass through. Another three, and that will not go down. And a rebound, fortunately, falls out of the hands of the Eagles to Matt Lewis. Wilson, rebound. Goes back up and counted on the effort. Good rebound by Wilson. Good, easy put back. Going the line for an AM one. As you see here, almost lost it, but he goes back out confident. He finished. And Juan Dixon with the right move here, getting Medley Bacon in the lineup. Foul was on Marshall. That is his fifth, so he is out of the lineup. So Nigel Marshall DQ'd at 5.01 in the ball game. Wilson strike. DJ can't complain. Dukes remain down by 11 on this possession for the Eagles. Eagles four out of 10 on three pointers this half. But 14 out of 29 overall, the Dukes six out of 24 shooting. And that ends up out of bounds. It's Clayton lost the handle defensively for the Dukes. Way to stay up straight there for Christmas. Another foul as Lewis tries to get the Dukes inched back into this at the free throw line, if nothing else. The worst thing the Eagles can do here, Kurt, is foul. Because if, if the Dukes score from clock stop as Lewis goes in. The fourth foul on Colby Thomas, number 10. As Mac converts. You'll, uh, you'll start to see the Dukes start to climb back in and with the clock stop, and that's not a good sign for any team leading. First time in Matt's career, he's hit for 20 points in a game. Ten point difference. Flipping it out, Medley Bacon. And a new shot clock. But Robinson, a deep three, and that's one from the NBA range. Aaron Robinson, 20 points. Another tray. Lewis with the try to. But it's 81-68, under four minutes to go. Dukes in a deep hole of 13. And number 13 with the basketball. Clayton protects the ball and lays it in. Dewan Clayton has eight. And Coppin State up by a big 15 points with only 3.40 to play. JMU's uh, last lead, they, they led it 54 43, 53, that is, with 15.54 to go. It's knocked out of bounds. The Dukes were getting away with those cross-court passes in the first half. Dixon made an adjustment. They haven't been second half. Yeah, actually, the Dukes led with 12.35 to go by one. And that was at 59.58. So Dukes have only scored the 10 since that stretch. Well, the nine since that stretch, actually. And the C's do part in an easy bucket for Clayton. As this game has come unraveled for James Madison and Coppin State. Another pass that leads to a run out and numbers. Euro step to finish is done for Robinson. So he doesn't hit a tray, he's got 22. Wilson, up Kobe Thomas, the other end. And a little circus shot doesn't fall. Thanks. Oh, 
James Lewis. And he finishes for the Dukes. Lewis, 22. The execution this half has not been as likely the first half for the Dukes, which is unfortunate. But sometimes you don't have bad, bad nights like this. You got to move on and hit the next one. Two minutes remaining. Well, I was telling you, Coppin State went a long stretch between wins over non-conference Division I opponents. Well, now they look like they might say they get less a long stretch. Well, they've won two straight when you think about it. Cornell, they beat Cornell the other day. That is true. Well, three in the same year, you're right. For the Dukes and Thanksgiving, not a good hors d'oeuvre. No, not yet. But they do have Saturday at home, so just think about it. That's a foul on Medley Bacon, which means he is at four fouls. Lewis providing the only offense for JMU here down the stretch. 23 for Matt. He gets another, so Matt making some offense at the free throw line. Robinson. Miscommunication to defense. Well, I thought it might be a high scoring affair. You did call that one. Coppin State with 91. Last time the Dukes. Let's see, we're in the. Looks like uh, last time they gave up triple digits, just to throw that out there was at UCLA to start the 2012 season. They lost to the Bruins. Mr. Ball and company, yep. 100 to 70. Actually, I, that was a little bit before Ball. I, I think he might have been a freshman that year. Lonzo? Yeah, I'm talking about Lonzo. Lonzo was uh, 26, 17, I was think. Was he? Okay. Yeah. 2017, 2016, somewhere in there. I'll look it up real quick. Must be confusing him with another here at UCLA at the time. A foul on Harvey. Actually, you know what? While you look at that, I'll go look at something else. Yeah, he was drafted in 2017, the first round. Okay. So played 2016-17 at UCLA. Got it. Thank you. Again, a foul this time wouldn't. And that is his first personal, so it'll send Thomas to the free throw line. That's just a bit shy. They were led by Norman Powell. Yeah, he ended up 27 points. Yep. 10 for 14 from the floor, 4 of 5 on three pointers. That's, that's still not the name I was thinking about. But anyway. I think Westbrook was before that time, too, if you were thinking about Westbrook. Westbrook was, at, I think, 08. Well, he does get 28, so he moves. He does jump two spots. He passes Stucky Mosley. 
1,136 points. And one more way to catch Dwayne Broyles, who finished his career in 2004. I mean, he's, he's tight enough. He's going to catch a lot of guys here. Then it's going to probably take him a couple of games. Andre Seminoff over 1,200 points. Right. He's 21st. I have there, too. He could possibly catch or, uh, catch Kent, too, for him, who played here. Oh, in, Jackson Kent? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Play here under Lewis Rowe's first year, I think. Harvey steps into a three. It's going to stay at the JMU end of the court. That's the story of the second half as the Dukes are, I think, 0 for 15 now. That's correct. 0 for 15 on Trey, 7 of 31 overall. Rebound Christmas. Harvey leaves it for Banks. Banks. Toss. And that gives him a career high, 24 points, but that's overshadowed quite a bit. It has. The Dukes are 0 for 15 on three-pointers in the half, 8 of 32 from the field in this period. Look Meanwhile, at, this. at the other end, it's quite different. 28 for Lewis, 24 for Banks, 14 for Wilson, hardly anybody else. Yeah, the remaining remaining players uh, provide all of uh, 12 points. Nothing out of Christmas, nothing out of Wooden. Both of those guys, Christmas, 20, uh, 26 minutes on the court. Will, Wooden only eight. Chris, uh, we got, uh, let's see, on the other side, 20 points for Robinson, 18 for the other Robinson. So that's Aaron with the, with the 18. 11 each for McKnight and Marshall, 12 for Clayton. That's a two-pointer off the front of the... Uh, we might see something interesting here. Oh, nope, they're just going to run it out. Which James is going to run it out. Dukes will continue to fight. And they're just going to let the air come out of the basketball here. And so the uh, Eagles of Coppin State come to Harrisonburg, and they'll soar out of here with a 94 a 78 win over the host Dukes of JMU. And the Dukes are up by just one with just uh, about 12 minutes to go, but the last 12 minutes belong to Coppin State's Eagles and Juan Dixon and company. They'll head up to their locker room in celebration. The Dukes will have a few days to think about it when they come back to the combo court. <laughs> 